This video is brought to you by Captivating History. You've probably heard of Bali. Globetrotters and travel buffs rave about the famous travel destination. The small island in maritime Southeast Asia is the crown jewel of the Indonesian archipelago. The lush tropical forests, the splendid beaches, and the unique cultural heritages attract millions of tourists every year. Bali is known for its diverse blend of spiritual philosophies that paint a unique picture of the divine force. Known as the Island of the Gods, Bali contains many temples that signify the diverse ideas of its people. Most of these temples are dedicated to Balinese Hinduism, an endemic blend of Buddhism and Hinduism, and other indigenous beliefs from Java. The breathtaking scenery, the mystic blend of religious thought, and the contributions to world heritage spur on the feeling of wanderlust. Bali has attracted the attention of other kingdoms throughout history. Bali has always put up resistance against foreign invaders, but it has also been forged in the ways of the various cultures that landed ashore. By preserving the traditions and customs of old, it stands as a testament to the past, the present forever colored in its tribute. It functions as a quiet sanctuary that revels in its oddities and idiosyncrasies, offering solace to all those who seek it. It has been ruled by the Majapahit Empire, has undergone an era of Islamic domination, and has resisted bravely against the colonial enterprises of Europe. Today, 80% of its population is Hindu, 12% is Muslim, 5% is Christian, and half a percent is Buddhist. A magical world of folklore and pantomimes, Bali's history is as rich as the aesthetic pleasures it offers. To understand the history of Bali, one needs to understand it on the context of its geographical position in Southeast Asia. Bali is part of the southeastern archipelago of the Lesser Sunda Islands of Indonesia, where it exists as one of the 34 provinces of the Republic of Indonesia. Indonesia is the largest island country in the world, with its 34 provinces constituting more than 17,500 islands that spread from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Ocean in an arc. Indonesia forms an oceanic region of coral and maritime life abundance known as the Coral Triangle, with Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, the Philippines, the Solomon Islands, and Timor-Leste. The Coral Triangle lies opposite mainland Southeast Asia, also known as Indochina, a large peninsula that comprises Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, mainland Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Bali is part of archipelagic Southeast Asia standing far west in the chain of Lesser Sunda Islands, two miles east of Java, an island that played a tremendous role in shaping the city's culture. Now that we have a rudimentary understanding of Indonesia, let's go back in time. One of the first known specimens of Homo erectus was found on Java, dating from between 1 million to 700,000 years ago. Quite similarly, evidence indicates that early man inhabited Bali in the Paleolithic era, dating from 1 million BCE to 200,000 BCE. Evidence also suggests the presence of Homo erectus species in Bali's Mesolithic times, which date from 200,000 to 30,000 BCE. Sophisticated ancient tools like arrow points and tools made from animal bones have been found in this region. The presence of prehistoric man in the region suggests that these areas must have been more accessible in ancient times. Somewhere between 6500 and 4500 BCE, most of Southeast Asia started being populated by Austronesian peoples. The Austronesians probably inhabited Bali around the second millennium BCE. By 500 BCE, bronze and iron metallurgy existed in the Southeast Asian islands, and Dong Sun drums from Vietnam were also traded to Sunda. Some pottery has also been unearthed at Bali that dates between 200 BCE to 200 CE. Bali was probably part of ancient trading routes with Greater Asia. People migrated to Bali before the Common Era, but these migrations were largely independent of one another. The arrival of Hindu merchants from India and Sri Lanka in the first century CE made the most significant impact on the population of ancient Bali. The Austronesian people had created a maritime trade network across the Indo-Pacific, connecting them to India and China. This trade network developed into the Maritime Silk Road that facilitated trade across Africa, Europe, China, Southeast Asia, the Indian subcontinent, 
and the Arabian Peninsula from the 2nd century BCE to the 15th century CE. The era from the beginning of the Common Era to the 14th century CE is known as Bali's historical period. During this time, the region experienced an influx of people from India, Java, and China, which introduced Hinduism and later on Buddhism to the locals. The earliest settlers on the island were the Austronesian and the Dongsan peoples. But in the 8th century CE, another migration took place. Around 400 people from Java moved around a volcano called Gunung Agong in the village of Aga, believing that the higher region brought them closer to the gods. Aga communities continued to flourish in Bali. Bali Agas preserved their strict cultural code and remained separated from Balinese life and the mainstream tourist fare. The name Bali probably originated from the 7th century CE. It is considered a derivation of the word babali, meaning offerings, which refers to the concept of making donations to the spirit world. The first written records discovered in Bali were Buddhist inscriptions on clay tablets dating back to the 8th century CE. Thanks to another inscription from the 10th century CE, we know that King Sri Kasara was the Balinese king around that time and used the title Warmadua. King Yudhiyana Warmadua, the father of the famous King Erlanga, also used the title during his reign in the second half of the 10th century CE. At the same time, the Madang Kingdom of Java was experiencing its heyday and was ruled by the Shailendra dynasty, which was a Hindu buddhist monarchy. King Sri Kasari was probably of Shailendra descent and could have migrated from Java to Bali. By the 11th century, Hindu and Javanese people started pouring in. Their influences began to shape the beliefs and lifestyles of Bali. When King Uriyana Warmadua married an eastern Javanese woman, Queen Mahendradatta of the Isyana dynasty, the sister of the last king of the Madang kingdom, Bali and East Java experienced a union of kingdoms. After Warawari, a vassal king, destroyed eastern Java, the eldest son of King Uriyana, Erlanga, established the Kahurapan kingdom of Java. By the 12th century, the descendants of Erlanga, Jayasakti and Jayapangas, took their turns ruling Bali. Through royal marriage, the Chinese customs gained more significance in this era. After a while, the Warmadua lineage died out, so indigenous kings probably ruled the island for some time. Following an invasion of King Kurtanagara of the Singhasari Empire in 1284, Bali lost its autonomy. Once the king was assassinated, his empire fell. King Kurtanagara's son-in-law, Vijaya, took to the throne and founded the Majapahit Empire in 1293. The Majapahit Empire was an Indianized kingdom based in central and eastern Java from the 13th century to the 16th century. It was a thalassocracy, an empire at sea, that developed into a highly organized cultural and artistic society. It was a financially viable kingdom, especially considering their rice cultivation. The golden age of the Majapahit Empire was from 1350 to 1389. During this time, Hayam Wuruk's leadership saw the empire dominate large swaths of Indonesia, including Java, Bali, the southern Malay Peninsula, Borneo and Kalimantan, Sumatra, and the Philippines. The empire's Hindu court employed people and used resources for religious rituals that became general practices in the region. After the death of Hayam Wuruk in 1389, people started quibbling over the empire's remains. The disintegration of the kingdom coincided with the rise of Islam in the region. The Majapahit kingdom fell to the Javanese Sultanate of Damark in 1527, which was responsible for spreading Islam in the region. After the fall of the empire, Bali was once again independent. Some myths claim that Javanese royalty fled to Bali and brought an even more potent influx of Hindu arts, literature, and religion. Despite the arrival of Islam, the cultural remnants of the Majapahit Empire exist to this day. Many states of Southeast Asia later claimed to be related to the empire. By the 16th century, the colonialist expansion of European states was well underway. European influence of the Malay archipelago was centered around the region of Malacca on the Malay Peninsula. The Muslim Sultanate of Malacca had been a dominant regional power for nearly a hundred years. The Europeans, specifically the Dutch and the Portuguese, subdued them in 1511. For almost 130 years, the Portuguese retained control of Malacca. In the 17th century, 
the Dutch overtook the regional powers from the Portuguese after the Spice War. As it was an important part of the maritime Silk Road, both parties wanted to take over the region to benefit from the spice trade. The Europeans first made contact with Bali in 1512, when the Portuguese sent a ship from Malacca to Bali. In 1585, the Portuguese tried but failed to establish a fort and a trading post in Bali. The Dutch arrived in Bali for the first time in 1597. Their domination of the Malay archipelago from the mid-17th century saw them take over vast expanses of Indonesia, but they did not show much interest in Bali initially. However, in the 19th century, the Dutch turned their attention towards Bali. After the collapse of the East India Companies in the 1800s, the Dutch East Indies, the Dutch colonial arm of the European Dutch Republic in Southeast Asia, came into focus. The Dutch East Indies remained a dominant force in the archipelago until the 20th century, with a brief interim period from 1806 to 1815, known as the French and the British Interregnum. During the Napoleonic Wars from 1803 to 1815, the Dutch operated as a vassal of the French, who controlled their continental dominions back home. The Dutch could not hold out against the British, who invaded Java in 1811. After the Napoleonic Wars, the French power in Europe collapsed, and the Dutch reasserted their dominance by taking Batavia under the terms of the Anglo-Dutch Treaty. By the mid-19th century, the Dutch claimed that they wanted to eradicate opium smuggling, arms trading, and slavery from Bali. Using these excuses, they started to impose control on Balinese kingdoms. From 1846 to 1848, the Dutch launched two military campaigns but failed to make a significant impact. Third time's a charm, and another campaign in 1849 proved to be just that for the Dutch. They took the northern areas and pushed the Balinese to the south of the island. In the late 19th century, a struggle between the southern kingdoms of the island gave the Dutch another excuse to intervene which they did. In 1906, the Dutch launched an attack on the southern ports of Bali to assert their sovereignty. After so much violence and bloodshed, the Dutch were worried about their image as benevolent colonialists, so they started to preserve and endorse Balinese culture. Bali was open for tourism in 1914. During the Second World War, Japan occupied Bali. After the Japanese surrender, the British and Indian 5th Infantry Division liberated Bali the island was handed over to the Dutch the following year. The Dutch wanted to rule Bali as they had before the war, but the Balinese were sick and tired of the oppressors and formed a freedom army. The Dutch wiped out the Balinese forces in 1946. Upon realization of Indonesian independence in 1949, Bali was included in the United States of Indonesia. In 1963, Mao Tagung erupted and killed thousands, bringing more eyes to the small, radiant island. Over the years, its reputation for unique culture, initiated by the Dutch during their colonial rule, continued to grow. Today, Bali is one of the most sought-after travel destinations in the world. To learn more about the history of Bali, check out our book, History of Bali, a captivating guide to Balinese history and the impact this island has had on the history of Indonesia and Southeast Asia. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, Grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.